Two terms I wanted to explain to you today. One is subglottal pressure and the other is supraglottal pressure. Those two pressures together make our voice work. So before I go into the concept of how they work, I'll just explain what those names mean. The glottis is the area between the vocal folds and therefore superglottal is above the vocal folds and subglottal is beneath the vocal folds. And that's that. Now let's understand the how. If I blow air between my lips, comfortably and slowly, exhale and then inhale slowly and comfortably. It's all very nice. Now do it again. But this time, when you inhale, inhale the air really fast. So start by exhaling. And now inhale really fast. What happened? Your lips came together. And this is part of what brings the vocal folds together when we sing. We need a minimum amount of air pressure beneath our vocal folds, meaning our lungs, if we want to produce sound. The air is like the engine that starts the sound production. And different physical laws can help us understand why, but instead of explaining the physics, I'll just say that air pressure below the vocal folds, otherwise known as subglottal pressure, is key for any type of phonation, singing or speaking. That's why breathing, support, and air management became such important subjects in many, 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 many vocal techniques. If you want to increase the air pressure in your lungs, you need to decrease the lung volume. Or if you want to increase the air pressure inside a balloon, you need to decrease the volume and squeeze it a little bit. And that can be done with my hands, or if I'm talking about my lungs, I can do it with the diaphragm or stomach muscles pulling up. All right, but there are three important things I want to say here. One, according to research, the well-trained singers don't rely on subglottal pressure as much as untrained singers. In other words, a well-trained singer need less subglottal pressure. This shows that while minimum pressure is necessary, there is no immediate need to push the abs and increase the air pressure inside the lungs. Second thing, we have a unique set of muscles in our larynx that assist the vocal folds doing their thing. Muscles that help the vocal folds close, open, stretch, all that stuff. This is yet another opportunity to remind us all that a good appoggio or support is not just about the air flow or the air pressure. It is our ability to coordinate between the air pressure, between the air flow, between the muscles and all of that all at once. Third thing I wanted you to remember is that what happens in the glottis and below the glottis is not enough for sustained vibration in the vocal folds. The important pressures and acoustic energy created above the vocal folds, meaning the supraglottal pressure, is another important key. The supraglottal pressure will create a push and pull game with the subglottal pressure which will help the vocal folds do what they need to do. In other words, each pressure will engage the other one which will help us sustain a note or simply continue phonating for longer times. In summary, if we manage the supraglottal pressure and the subglottal pressure well enough, the vocal folds will be happy. So happy that it will actually be easier to sing and speak because they are able to move freely and vibrate. And I want to show you one more thing because it's cool. <laughs> 